With legions of state-funded groups descending on Dublin to support the government's immigration policy, it seems like concerned communities are paying taxes to be demonized at this point. This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Before we start the video, if you want to support Gripped and our work, make sure to click like, subscribe and comment because by liking, commenting and sharing, this channel will get boosted in the algorithm and get seen by more people. And so with that said, on to the video. You know, in many countries, when the public is unhappy about something, they protest against the government, which is perfectly healthy and normal. But Ireland is a little bit different. We might be the only country in the world where the government endorses protests against the people, which is exactly what we saw over the weekend at the so-called Ireland for All rally in Dublin in support of the government's policy of unvetted mass immigration. This event was a de facto counter-protest to oppose the ongoing asylum demos in areas like East Wall, and of course it featured the usual so-called opposition parties. Sinn Féin, People Before Profit, the Social Democrats, Labour, etc. The usual suspects. But in a stunning and heartwarming display of camaraderie, the opposition and the government apparently put aside their differences as it was also attended and supported by parties such as the Greens. How lovely to see Paul Murphy, Sinn Féin and the government merrily marching hand in hand together for the same cause. It would almost bring a tear to your eye. As the Greens tweeted ahead of the march, the Green Party will be joining the Lakela Ireland for All march against racism this Saturday in Dublin, standing in solidarity with all and against the hate and division that some are trying to sow. We hope you can join us there. Hashtag refugees welcome. In fact, so similar is the government and opposition messaging that Ireland for All was actually Fianna Fáil's official campaign slogan at the last general election just a couple of years ago. And Ireland for All, that is Fianna Fáil's commitment and philosophy. That awkward moment when you're so opposed to the government that you march with them to support their policies while using their last election slogan. Truly amazing stuff. Now, in fairness, it makes sense that the Greens would be there. After all, Integration Minister Roger Gogorman is a Green Party TD who has overseen the arrival of tens of thousands of asylum claimants to Ireland in the past year. And in response, concerned citizens, mainly in working class areas, have spent months voicing their opposition to the large numbers of unvetted adult male asylum seekers being parachuted onto their doorsteps without any prior consultation. People like me, I was called a far right leftists, whatever it is that they're calling us, but not, not in a nice way, uh, saying that I'm just that and the other, but I'm a concerned parent, I have five children, and I'm very worried for my children in this country, like, are they going to be given property? Like, where do they live? When, like, if all these people, these 72,000 they reckon will be here by the end of the year, if they all get houses, what about our children? Where will they live? Will they be getting houses? Will they be given houses? The way, like, anyone who comes in is given a house and plus they're coming in they're not they're not ukrainian they're not all ukrainian they're from everywhere else in the country or in, in the world they're from come some of them are passing through 13 countries before they land here i seen an interview with a guy and he was living in london but then he heard how good um, it was in ireland so he hopped across the land getting getting uh, pps numbers getting medical cards like our own can't get medical cards you know, so it's just, it's just, it just doesn't fit, it's just wrong. We know from Ireland Thinks polling that working class people, particularly working class women, are the demographic most likely to oppose Ireland's current asylum regime. And we know from multiple polls, including Red Sea, that an overall majority of Irish people object to the government's no-cap policy. But almost two-thirds said that Ireland should not take in an unlimited amount. And views on Ireland's ability to accommodate refugees seem to reflect deep concerns. Over 80% disagreed with the suggestion that Ireland has the services to cater for the numbers coming here, while over 40% believe they or their families have poorer access to services because of the number of refugees and asylum seekers arriving. And yet, what is the government and opposition's response to these sentiments and protests? Well, apparently to hold a protest of their own against you. The politicians are now protesting against the public for opposing their migration policies. Try to figure that one out if you can. But politicians do need the public at the end of the day. After all, their protest on Saturday wouldn't have been possible without your generous contribution. What am I referring to exactly? Well, if you pay tax at all in this country, then you financially 
actually supported well over half of the groups participating on Saturday. For example, the event was attended by the National Women's Council, which receives well over half a million euros in taxpayer funding every single year from Roger Go Gorman's Department of Integration. Another NGO in attendance at the protest was Belong To, which received 100,000 euros from Roger Go Gorman's department just last year. Pavi Point was there and is funded by the government. LGBT Ireland was there and is funded by the government. Friends of the Earth are funded by the government. Places of Sanctuary, the Union of Students Ireland, the Free Legal Aid Council, the NGO Duras, the NGO Kovlov, the Irish Network Against Racism, the Transgender Equality Network, the Immigrant Council, Outhouse, Dublin Pride, I could go on and on. Dozens and dozens of taxpayer funded groups and NGOs attended this event to support the government policy. And the public funds these groups through our taxes, which means that this truly was the best protest that money can buy. I don't know what the mobile extension is for Rent a Mob or Crowds Are Us, but the government clearly have them on speed dial. This whole thing effectively amounts to a top down state driven protest against the public. It was even attended by journalists, not covering the event, mind you, but participating in it. Here is Saoirse Pollock, the Irish Times immigration reporter, and after the event she said, First time in years I've attended a march rather than covering it for work. And this one feels particularly important. Felt proud marching behind POS Ireland banner with my parents and sister, joining thousands of other Dubliners in calling for Ireland for all. So this is the Irish Times immigration reporter. This is the person giving you quote unquote facts about migration in this country while marching in an explicitly pro mass migration event. It turns out that the revolution very much will be televised. Many outlets, including RTE, repeated the absurd claim by the organizers that 50,000 people were in attendance. And meanwhile, they had previously said that a similarly sized anti-lockdown crowd was only hundreds. So the media's behind it, the government's behind it, the so-called opposition is behind it, the six billion euro a year NGO sector is behind it, as are the trade unions, by the way, who are traditionally supposed to represent the interests of the working class, and all all of these forces are allied against ordinary blue collar mammies in small villages and towns like Kinnegat and East Wall. But look, maybe I'm being too negative here. At least their messaging was moderate and sensible. No borders, no nations. Stop deportations. No borders. No borders, no nations, which would of course include Ireland since Ireland is a nation, so they want to do away with the concept of countries altogether, and I guess the world just becomes some kind of amorphous blob with no distinct cultures or nationalities. And by the way, there goes Irish nationalism out the window, I'm not sure what Irish heroes fought and died for over the centuries if we're just going to do away with Ireland as a concept. But regardless, they finish their chant with stop deportations, meaning nobody should ever be deported for any reason, not even rapists and murderers. Is this seriously supposed to be representative of the general public's view? One of their headline speakers was a convicted killer who stabbed a man to death in prison over a bag of heroin. My name is Steele Wall and I want an Ireland for all. Diversity, not division. We're stronger together. See us all this Saturday, the 18th of February. They also had a former asylum seeker who was caught with inconsistencies in her asylum backstory and who was charged with assaulting another woman at an asylum center. What's the crack, Dublin? My name is Ellie Kisiombe. I want Ireland for her. No division, but diversity. The public are being lectured on their bigotry and extremism by people who stab others to death over heroin disputes, who have been arrested over suspected illegal immigration, and who say they don't want the nation of Ireland to exist. I think we're actually good for moral lectures from this crowd, thanks. In a way, this protest was perfect. It so perfectly summed up the out-of-touch, elitist Borg that is official Ireland, as all of the most powerful people in society rally together against those with the smallest voice. 
But these parties would do well to remember that NGOs can't vote for them. And if they keep fobbing off most of the country and their reasonable concerns, then they may be in for a rude awakening at the next election. Please like and share this video. And if you enjoyed it, please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get, and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.